Hi there, I'm Jill Chivers from Shop Your Wardrobe and 16 Style Types. And I'm Imogen Lamport from Inside Out Style and 16 Style Types. And we're going to talk today about how to build a more sustainable fashion future. Um, I think this is quite a hot topic these days uh, because, you know, we've started to really feel the impact that we are having on our world. Like here in Australia, we have had terrible like floods and fires all this summer. Mm. Um, and, you know, a lot of it's to do with some man-made issues mm. <laughs> that, you know, are only going to get worse if we don't think about this. And I think the fast fashion industry has been uh, not a good thing for mm. our, you know, our global health moving forwards. And so there's lots of ways. I thought we'd talk a little bit about some of the different ways you can think about um, sustainability, whether it's where you buy things from. Mm. Uh, what you buy, uh, you know, how long you keep things for. There's all sorts of things and where you dispose to as well. All those mm. kind of things impact the sustainability element of fashion. Yeah, it's, and it's a real balance point between how do you remain stylish and how do you, um, you know, have a good conscience about your contribution mm. to fast, you know, the world of fast fashion. And, and there have been a lot of criticisms of fast fashion in social media and books that have been written and uh, Chop Your Wardrobe, I've uh, reviewed a couple of those books. You know, To Die For is, is one of them where, you know, the author reports that we are using in the fashion industry alone 140% of the world's resources, 140%. So we're, we're way overusing what the world's resources are. And of course, a lot of this can make us start to feel really bad. Um, and, and, you know, there, there is an impetus for us to not necessarily feel bad, but to, to get smarter about the choices that we make. And, you know, my goal always with Shop Your Wardrobe was, was not to reduce everything that I had and to stop shopping. Remaining stylish and maintaining my interest in, in style was always a key part of that challenge. But also just becoming a better global citizen in terms of the choices that I made and, and really just recognising there are consequences to our fashion choices. And uh, to me, this is just sort of part of of, um, you know, being stylish, but also being like, maturely stylish. Yeah. Okay, so there's always that balance. So the fact that fashion trends do change, mm. you know, clothes are like milk, they go off over time. So, we, you know, and they also wear out. So yeah. we still have to shop no matter how much, unlike some things we go, I could just stop smoking for the rest of my life. And that's, right. you know, like, yeah. never yeah. have to smoke again. Mm -hmm. Um you still have to wear clothes. You're going to wear them for the rest of your life. So then it's how do you make those choices? What are you thinking about? And I think that's something mm. that's a really important factor. And it's like, and things that come into that, it's like, what's the source of them? Even things like yes. fabrics. Often people think, oh, I just do natural fibres. They're much better for the environment. But if you look at cotton, the mm. cost of cotton and growing cotton is enormous because it requires yeah. so much water. Now, we live in a country mm. that's water deficit. Yes. So um, cotton is not actually, certainly in our country, a good sustainable choice. Um, yeah. Yeah, oh, absolutely. And there's, there's a region in India which is known as the Suicide Valley because the cost of cotton has been driven so low mm. through competitive um, you know, price forces that the cotton growers are you know, virtually you know, working for nothing. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, they are despondent and in despair and, and have taken their own lives because they just, they can't make a living out of growing cotton. Yeah. Um, so it's one of those know. things, yeah, to think about. It's like, there's nothing like, you know, cotton is still a valid fabric, but it's, is it going to be in something that's going to last me a long time? So am I mm. going to get good wear out of it? So I don't want to buy something disposable made of cotton yeah. because that disposable T-shirt actually has a lot of consequences beyond you know and especially mm. if it's something that i'm barely going to wear um there's a lot more consequences versus if it's going to be in my wardrobe for the next five years or more you know maybe it, it's it, it it becomes a you know it has a more sustainable because it's not being got rid of like i'm going to wear it and this mm. is why it's like what's the quality of it yeah. um, will i look for a better quality version so it will last longer than right. buying the cheapest one I can find that maybe, you know, the sewing is poor and it falls to pieces really quickly. And then yeah. I dispose of it really fast because I'm going, all these things fall into pieces. Um, yeah. mm. And it's something to think about in particular when you are acquiring clothes. Mm. 
Yeah, and the source of things as well. I mean, there is a very strong sustainable fashion and style movement in Australia with, you know, the uh, materials that are used and also buying pre-loved and upcycling is also really popular. Uh, I've been an op shopper for years um, and it just suits me on so many different levels. When you have a large wardrobe, you don't need a lot of new things. It's it's can be very helpful, but also as someone who has struggled with over shopping, I find it's a, it's a great financial break as well. You know, I really can't do too much damage <laughs> in an op shop, but it also is a way of sort of keeping fashion moving. And, and I participate on you know, multiple points in that and contributing to, you know, that's where I give my clothing away to, but where I also source things from as well. And, and it's a highly creative way of shopping as well. Sometimes you have to, you know, put your thinking cap on in terms of how something could be upstyled or reworked so that it does suit in a current wardrobe and isn't going to look like a costume from times gone by. Yeah. So, I mean, that's, you know, that's the thing is, can you, you know, so some things can be reworked and it is that thing. So thrift stores are a great place to find things. Mm. Um, at least like, you know, maybe they were bought and then never worn. Like there's plenty of almost new stuff in them. So yeah. at least if they then get recycled in somebody else's wardrobe, kind of the waste is not quite so great. Hopefully they'll get worn or they can be upcycled in something mm. into something else. And mm. then of course, yeah, that kind of process of then letting your own stuff go back into the wild, releasing it back into a thrift store. Mm. And it's one of those things often I think about that if you've got something home and you've realised it's not right and you can't take it back for whatever reason, let it go quickly. Yeah, because then there's right. more likely that if it's more in fashion, somebody else will want it more. It's not going to sit there languishing mm. in the thrift store in the way that, you know, something from 1973 may um, mm. until 1973 fashions are, the, you know, the height of fashion again. But it's that right. thing where mm. it's that let the things go more quickly if, if you've realised you've made a mistake. Um, that mm. actually does help with sustainability, believe it or not, because people are more likely to want that thing or, you know, Mm. if you sell it off on eBay, whatever it is, whatever is your kind of way of letting it out of your own environment into another environment, it's worthwhile thinking about, you know, that kind of what is the sustainability cost? Um, yeah. Where is it going to? Yeah. You know, one of the best ways I think to think about sustainability is uh, likening it to a workplace. So and one of the ways to have a really great team is in the recruitment phase, is recruiting the right yeah. people. And so acquiring the right items is actually a wonderful way to be sustainable in your fashion uh, and, and in your style because you're less likely to want to let things go off and um, or get rid of your entire wardrobe because it's been thought through. You know, it has colours that suit you or the figure flattery requirements for you there it suits your personality it has your star recipe you've made it an eight whatever those criteria you are and so shifting the the focus um, to the beginning of the process mm -hmm. that's a relatively simple thing to do that can make your style more sustainable just put a bit more time up front and that is going to hopefully then flow on to um, you know the usability of your items and how long you keep them for yeah I think that consciousness at the start this is why you know we've got to make it an eight or nine or ten out of ten yeah because if it doesn't rate highly before you buy it like why are you buying it um exactly. like don't bring it into your wardrobe if it's not something you're going to love yeah uh, and then it's you know how versatile is it will it work with other things you already own um yeah. or is it going to be an orphan because yeah the problem with the orphan like it's have i got something else i can wear it with at least for and if, ideally i want four or five things i can wear it with rather exactly. than just one yeah. um does it suit my colouring, my body shape, my figure flattery guidelines, whatever it happened to be my style rules that yeah. I can make up, but they're still my version. Um, mm. And I think the more yeah. you know, knowledge really helps here. The more you know about those things, the better choices you can make. Yeah. Something. Yeah, yeah, I was. Uh, that that uh, the, the criteria that you're using can also change over time. Mine, mine change at a snail's pace, honestly. There, the, you know, <laughs> there's been several <laughs> evolutions of the world before. Um, my criteria changes. Some people it changes more quickly, but yeah. but being aware of that as well and and how that impacts on how you feel about your wardrobe and how it works is also you know part of. Uh, being more conscious and and that's a, a huge thing this consciousness actually increasing your level of awareness 
about your own style and what really works for you. Um, I know as an over shopper, um, I would often short circuit that process mm. and just, it's just go straight on, on emotion. I just, I love it and I have to have it. Yeah. And so a big part of my own return to sanity was putting in all these interrupters into that process so that I couldn't go from, I love it to, to I've purchased it quickly. Um, and I still actually use a whole stack of those processes. Mm. I find they're helpful for slightly different reasons these days, but it's a good principle to work on. Yeah, and especially even things like, you know, have I got one like this at home already? Mm. You know, you can love it. And, and then Jill and I have been shopping in a thrift store here and there and she's like found a leopard print dress. And I'm going, okay, well, you know, it's fine. But is it actually significantly different enough from all the other leopard print dresses you already own? And do you mm. love it more than them? Um, yes. And would you let another thing go to bring this thing in? That can actually be a, a good mm. uh, little test for you to go, do I love it more than things I actually own already? Um, but- for two, for two reasons that that is an excellent question, you know, one is you are actually going to have to make that choice. If you have two of the same thing and you're, you're choosing it and that's the thing to wear, you're going to have to pick one over the other. Yeah. You're not going to be able to wear both. Yeah. And so that's one reason. The second is storage. Um, you know, I have this fabulous way, well, it's fabulous to me, uh, that I store my jewellery and I, I like bangles. I have quite a lot of them, but my bangle drawer Yes, I have an entire drawer in my little jewellery thing. It is at capacity. So if I see a new bangle, that is the exact choice I have to make. Something's going to have to go for this to come into it because I do have no more drawers left and I refuse to, you know, start start another one. You know, I have enough. So, you know, it really does come down to I've, I've got to pick one over the other here and I it's a good thing to do to stand in the store and go through that process rather than buy it and take it home and have to do it at home yes so so it's worthwhile kind of thinking about like is it good or better like than anything i already own um before it comes home because there is a lot of research that shows that once we've bought something we actually place a higher value on it so it's harder to let go than to not bring something into the home we don't value Mm. something as highly if we don't own it. So it's so really important to start mm. off that process that, you know, that conscious shopping, I think is such an important thing to do mm. so that we don't get overwhelmed with stuff. Um, mm. And we are thinking about sustainable. And the other thing too is like, is there a source? Like, have I got places where I'm happy about, you know, and it can be things like how the people who make my clothes are treated. Mm, um, if that's yes. something that matters to you and that's something that matters to a lot of people actually becoming aware of how the people who work in the factories that make the clothes are treated yeah um you know is it coming for a long way or is it coming from a short way now mm. we may live somewhere in the world where basically everything's brought in so mm. um but it's then well you know but sometimes like i'll often go if i can buy something that's made in australia yes i will try and do that because i mm. think you know it's actually better for you know, my local, both the environment, but also I go want to support people in my country as well. And um, it has a lower carbon footprint so much, if, if it hasn't been flown in from another country, country. which so much of our stuff is yeah. flown in from China. Uh, it's all, it's, Even on a boat. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. It's, it's come in by some carbon emitting vehicle. Um, yeah. It's not always possible to avoid that. And, no. Yeah, but yeah, where you can support local, I think it's always great. You know, so that, that's also something you like. And, and then if I know that if it's some local maker that, that's made it, then, then probably, yeah, there'll be a higher cost to it. But if I'm planning on keeping something in my wardrobe for years uh, which is what I like to do I don't you know I'm not a one season and it's gone sort of person I'll try and go will I be wearing this for quite some time do I like it so much that you know it's going to stay around Mm. Um, then of course that cost per wear reduces the cost over time Um, and it's a better use of that money um, in that way yeah, there's lots of different ways you can be thinking about your own sustainable style and conscious consumption and and sometimes just making small incremental changes where they can make you feel better about your, your shopping and your style and the way you consume. But they can also have a, this flow on effect um, as well. And I think that that is an important thing for us to consider and, you know, how we're leaving the planet and what contributions we're making to those things. I think they are good things for us to think about. Yeah. So, yeah, so kind of it's always that balance between, you know, that we do need some new things and clothes do wear out. And I do, you know, we've made a packing video we've just talked about. And, like, I do I did actually meet and talk to someone who did spend a year in a caravan driving around Australia. <laughs> and the thing she discovered, she'd taken a capsule wardrobe, but she had to replace that wardrobe three times. Wow. 
because mm. the clothes wore out because the amount of washing and wearing they were getting was like wash, you know, you know, wear, mm. wash, wear, wash, mm. wear, wash. They wore out way faster than if she had more things. Yeah. Um, it's like even with shoes. One of the things that I remember going, you know, talking to somebody about that, that if you want your shoes to last, don't wear them two days in a row. Yeah. Because shoes, you know, your feet sweat. Mm. That actually starts to degrade the shoe. If you let the shoe dry out, particularly of a leather shoe, mm. it'll actually last a lot longer if you let it dry yeah. out for one or two days after wearing it, mm. than wearing it every day. Yeah. Um, so you'll actually get, even if you wear it the same number of times, you'll, it'll actually look good and last longer just mm. because you've given that shoe a bit of time to breathe and dry out and, you know, kind of come yeah. back to its form. Yeah. So, mm. you know, that kind of endless wearing can, it's quite hard on your clothes. So just being yeah. aware too, that if you're going to go really small in a capsule, you're probably going to have to replace it much more frequently. And that also brings in issues of quality as well. You know, the higher the quality, which which is often related to price, but perhaps not oh, a, as direct relationship as what you'd imagine, um, you know, where things are just going to, to wear better. And, of course, in this world of fast and very disposable fashion, um, you know, that, that can be, you know, rowing against the tide to do that. I, I was reading something um, recently about how quick our fashion cycles and because it used to be seasonal yeah. and I was reading about one fashion um, fast fashion provider who has um, 52 cycles a year every week they are bringing in mm, yeah exactly and it's a global name um, but that their goal is to have women coming in twice a week that is their goal that's what they're going for twice a week they wow. want you coming in and buying something new. So um, I think, yeah, it's important to know that <laughs> that sort of thing. So it's like, and, and fabric. Uh, so some of the things to learn about fabric, one of the things I've learned is that there are some fabrics that just aren't worth spending any money on. Acrylic is one of them. It just wears really poorly. Mm. So, you know, I've seen, you know, gone through wardrobes. I've seen clothes within three wear. Like I'm going, this thing looks pilled and old. And they're going, I bought it like a week ago. Yeah. And it yeah. looks like it's been worn and water worn because the fabric is not good. The other mm. thing is fabric blends. So mm. one of the tricks with a fabric blend is if you see more than three different, uh, you know, ingredients, mm. uh, fibres in it, mm. it's not going to wear well. So oh, the, so more, right. the moment you get more than three, so generally one or two, it will wear mm. much better than three or four, like four and above. You'll right. find that it just wears out really quickly. Um, mm. Oh, that's so interesting. I didn't know that. Mm. Yeah, so that's something too to be aware of. That always oh, one of the things I'll always look at is what's the fibre content. Um, yeah. yeah. And they go, well, will that wear well or not? Uh, mm. Also, too, something to think about with sustainability is also the washing. You know, how, yep. if you're having to dry clean, are they chemicals that we're using, you know, yeah. to dry clean? Do you have to, you know, and even with sustainability, I think that even if you go, I have to hand wash, it's not a big use of water or anything, but... Mm. Is it your own resource? So for mm. me, if I look at something, I think, oh, my gosh, that requires all this special care. For me, the negativity, <laughs> my job for playing with a special <laughs> toy, <laughs> the negative aspect of there is... Um, <laughs> <laughs> Very cute. They're so mm. cute. But, yeah, mm. uh, is that it then it becomes work in my head. So I'm less likely to wear it. So, in fact, I'm not getting my cost per wear because I'm not wearing it because it means I'll have to do whatever special care is required. Yeah. Um, and, of course, but, yeah, we're all different on stuff like that. Yeah. And I totally get that. For me, I don't have that relationship because I, I don't do too much of it. But, uh, you know, I, I will do a little bit of hand washing. <laughs> oh, Sorry. <laughs> Um, but yeah, to know what your preferences are around yes. things like that is really helpful. Yes. So, so it is being aware, and I've met plenty of people who have the same thing. That it's that kind of, if a, if a garment feels like it's work to look after, less likely to wear it. So yeah. that's actually not a sustainable choice. In the mm. same way, is if it's something that you go, I can throw it in the washing machine, I don't have to worry about it. Yeah. So yeah, I think it's important to know those things about yourself and about your preferences before mm. you buy. I think, you know, the more you can make these good decisions up front, mm. um, then, then it's, you're going to make better and more sustainable decisions. Then if you mm. do buy things and don't wear them or buy things and realise you have to dry clean them or, you know, like all mm. these other things where you go, oh, it's not right, it's not the right colour or style and you put it on and doesn't look good, doesn't suit your lifestyle, you know, all those sorts of things that come into those kind of, fashion decisions that we make every day. 
And look, you're going to have to deal with it at some point, either in mental energy because you got the stuff and it's not being worn and it's not being stored in a way that's accessible or in just the emotional pain of having purchased all this stuff that's not being worn or feeling bad or feeling guilty or at some point you're going to have to deal with it. Yes. And so that's what I mean, you know, by putting all that energy or much more of it up front, you've got less to deal with as, as you go on. And that's when you really do get a, a wardrobe that's working for you. That's, you know, fabulous and totally suits you. And, and um, you can feel good about everything that you've got in there. You're wearing it all. Yeah. Um, and it, it, it feels sustainable to you. Yeah. So, you know, this is just a few tips and ideas that we've put here and I'll put some links in the blog post um, about some resources. Like, and you know, th there's everything, there's amazing lists of, um, you know, companies that are definitely more organic or more sustainable in, in whatever their supply chain may be and their, mm. their processes as well. I think that's something important to know about. But mm. also too, as I know, I did a blog post about some different fibers and that's where that kind of, I with my yeah. research, I found out that there's more than four fibers and does not last. Yeah. Um, and you know, like some, there's, there's some different aspects here that I think that are really important to think about because I think, mm. you know, if we want this world to be around um, for, you know, children, grandchildren, grand, grand, grandchildren, you know, like the yeah. future generations, we need to really start thinking about these things and start changing some of our poor behaviors that we have um, really done because really this stuff's only happened the last probably 50 years before yeah. that, we were totally sustainable because we are making our clothes out of locally sourced fabrics, fit to each person and their idea, you know, and their figure, you know, either making it yourself or having a seamstress make it. Like, And that is that, so interesting, you know, I remember watching a show um, uh, where they were in a, f a fashion museum and they were saying a lot of the everyday clothing from a hundred years uh, or so ago, they don't exist anymore because they were worn to death and then they were yeah. turned into the children's clothing or they were then used in curtaining or they just totally and utterly disintegrated. They were biodegraded back, you know, back into the earth. Yeah. And so the only clothes that really exist are finery that the, you know, what wealthier people had that were not worn that often, but everyday clothing just, it just doesn't exist anymore. We, we yeah. can't actually show people we can show photographs or sketches, yeah. but the clothing itself doesn't exist anymore. Yeah. So, you know, it's one of those things it's really been since the advent of mass manufacturing that we've yeah. really like gone this, you know, and I think now we're starting to go around where more and more people are sewing their own clothes. Yeah. Um, or altering and, and, and upstyling and all those sorts of things because we started to realise that, you know, those were amazing skills that people had and you actually got a better wardrobe for yourself because it's yeah. more attuned to you and who you are. Yeah. Um, and it's also giving a new life sometimes to clothes that maybe, you know, had otherwise been, uh, you know, weren't so good for you so yeah and we recognize that those consequences as well and and the slow movement slow food slow style slow travel um you know that is really gaining momentum as well as people think about their lives and what they want their lives to be and and you know how much they do want to actually enjoy and relish the moments that they're in whether or not that's a moment that includes style or food or travel or other people or relationships or whatever it is and 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 style and fashion totally fit into that picture yeah so we'd love your thoughts as well if you've got any brilliant sources or ideas do please feel free to share in the comments um and you know it's something to think about the next time you're shopping is that is this a sustainable choice that i'm making